from <coughs> the fascinating world of genetics back to surgery and anatomy. Dear colleagues and Dupitron experts, I would like to introduce you to a somehow new concept of the pathogenesis of what we call Dupitron's contraction. But first, let me introduce myself. I am a surgeon of the old school with a love to applied anatomy. Though the Dupitron hand has fascinated me all through my professional life. Unfortunately, my English is not perfect, which hopefully doesn't lead to misunderstandings. The traditional concept of pathogenesis explains the Dupitron finger on the basis of pathological shortening of the normal fascial structure. But clinical findings and new insights into the fiber anatomy indicate an extension blocking. Fibromatosis takes place not in this hand, but in this hand with flexed fingers day and night. Two statements that most would happily accept. In the beginning, there is a new tumor-like tissue which takes place in the subcutaneous fibro fatty tissue. And here a look into the living fibro fatty tissue. The fibers run transversely, no palmodigital fiber continuum. Another look into the palmar tissue finger base. The subcutaneous tissue layer of densely packed anchoring fibers with interposed fat. The pulley as part of the tissue floor. The tendons glide in the layer beneath the fiber tissue. But the tendon function of contraction cannot be transposed into the fibrophatic tissue. The finger is built like a chain. With flexion, the inside becomes short. The first plastinated slices of adult hands show no spatial structure in finger extension, but in finger flexion, you see densely packed fibers anchoring the tissue in a specific mobile way. Fibromatosis takes place within this compressed fiber tissue between skin and fibrous tendon sheaths. Dupitron's tissue shows a specific topographical quality. Fibromatosis exclusively in the dynamic finger tissue leads to bent fingers. Nodules in the tissue above the epineurosis don't affect finger extension. The borderline is in the niveau of the uh, transverse uh, creases. <coughs> what is the fiber structure in the cross section? The main elements of fibrophatic tissue are the grazing fibers which run across the tendon to the opposite side. This cross structure has not been described before. The peritendinous cross fibers are responsible for changing size and shape of the cross section, the precondition for a mobile fixation. The crossing fibers have transverse and oblique orientation. They are packed densely side by side. No fiber continuum as a bridge from palm to finger. The crossing fibers above the central pulley, living anatomy in surgery. 
and here the spinal nerve and at the distal end of the incision crossing grazing fibers. And here a cadaver hand, the crossing fibers in the zone of natatory ligament, not a ligament texture, but exclusively anchoring fibers. They are not a band. The fibrofatic tissue is a single unified tissue complex. A single unified structure which has been named by Flint as Palmer Connective Tissue Continuum. This has incorrectly led to the term Palmo Digital Fiber Continuum. I have never seen in the living hand a Palmo Digital Bridge Structure. The nodules originate principally between the skin and the fascia, the deep structures. Growth by expansion causes a nodule to replace subcutaneous adipose tissue. This is no, not a contraction. With flexed fingers, normal skin relief. With finger extension, tissue retention. The tissue near the nodule is fixed, not a contraction. Dupitron's disease starts with a subcutaneous nodule which replaces the fat, encloses the anchoring fibers and attaches to the aponeurosis and cleaving ligaments. Subcutaneous tissue and enclosed anchoring fibers, no signs of a contraction process. The, fi the fiber discontinuum becomes a fiber continuum without tension loading. In the diseased hand, the fixed tissue and its environment, aponeurosis, vertical septa, and cleland ligaments, react to tension loading. Living anatomy in an example. The fasciectomy is limited to the finger area. The reactive altered epineurosis should not be removed. The incision starts between the transverse creases. No surgery in the midline. Skin landmarks and the cut surface of the cord are marked. The spiral nerve seems to be displaced. Please notice the marked position in the web space level. On the other side of the same finger, the same position and location, a normal situation, the Cleland ligament fibers beneath the neurovascular bundle, with finger flexion, they become turned towards the palm where they can be retained. These are the Cleland's ligaments. So, the cord around the nerve spirals is a hypertrophic Cleland ligament which is fixed in its flexion position. The same hand six years later. It's clear of disease. The, the pathogenesis in a didactic diagram. In the healthy hand, the extended fibers and the compressed fibers. The nodule bridges the different tissues, area, tissue areas and creates a conglomerate which binds together fibers and surrounding structures. The primal tissue loses its mobility and herewith the finger loses its extension mobility. 
nerve and artery are in principle not displaced. They are fixed in their normal position, but in bent finger. So, what am I trying to point out? Phycomatosis fixes the compressed palmar tissue, which loses its extension mobility. And with this, the finger is retained in flexion position. The primary tissue and its environment is remodeled by stress adaptation to definite pivotal tissue. The process takes place in the mobile finger tissue more than in the stationary mid tissue. This is the reason why Luck proposed not to excise the reactive altered aponeurosis. Luck was the first author who mentioned the significance of the tissue stress adaptation. Luck's histogenic classification seems to be up to date. Only his idea that contraction is based on an involutional process is to be interpreted differently. My research reveals that the seemingly contracted tissue is nothing else than tissue retained in flexion position. This is uh, uh, luck. <coughs> and I have modified this method and named it digital fasciectomy. It's an exclusively subcutaneous position. And last but not least, extension splinting of the fingers, static splinting, can prevent tissue and finger retention. In this concept, the myofibroblast seems to be a reactive cell transformation as part of the connective tissue stress adaptation. No active tissue or fiber contraction. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>